Gabe Kapler fired as San Francisco Giants manager. Wow, bombshell. Was he just a scapegoat? Why does Farhan Zaidi, who constructed these failed rosters, get to keep his job? And who are the candidates to replace the fired Kapler? You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites, Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts, including YouTube. Uh, Check us out there. Please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show. Also, download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And coming up on today's show, guess what we're going to talk about? Uh, The fact that the Giants fired Gabe Kapler. And on our last episode on Friday, you know, I actually changed at the last minute the title. The title was going to be like more about like, did Farhan Zaidi just hint that Gabe Kapler may be fired, basically. Uh, and within the show, if you listened, we talk all about this interview Zaidi did on KNBR uh, the day, you know, like Thursday or whatever. Um, and he basically was asked point blank, uh, by Adam Copeland, I think it was, who, uh, like, will Kapler be back? And Zaidi dodged the question. And so the episode was largely on Friday about uh, what the heck was that about? And it turns out it meant probably that he already knew that Kapler was going to be fired. And I apologize for not getting an uh, emergency podcast out. This was just a crazy weekend for me, so the Giants... They did not consult with me uh, before making this decision and, you know, because I would have said, hey, wait, wait a minute, because I I won't have time to do a emergency podcast over the weekend. But anyway, here's how I found out. I get media emails from the Giants and at 2.19 p.m. on September 29th, the Giants media... uh, sent out the following message with the subject, Gabe Kapler dismissed as San Francisco Giants manager. And it says, uh, the San Francisco Giants today announced that the club has dismissed manager Gabe Kapler, quote, after making this recommendation to ownership and receiving their approval, I met with Gabe today to inform him of our decision said Giants president of baseball operations, Farhan Zaidi. Quote, in his tenure as Giants manager, Gabe led the team through an unprecedented pandemic in 2020 and a franchise record 107 wins and postseason berth in 2021. He has been dedicated and passionate in his efforts to improve the on-field performance of the San Francisco Giants, and I have tremendous respect for him as a colleague and friend. On behalf of the Giants organization, we wish Gabe the best of luck in his future endeavors and thank him for his contributions over the last four years, end quote. So, talk about a bombshell on September 29th at 2.19 p.m. Although it is not ultimately all that surprising that this has happened. The only thing that makes it kind of surprising is that Greg Johnson... Uh, said Zaidi and Kapler will be back in 2024, like two weeks ago. Um, but just the way they finished out and the way that they, I mean, they ultimately ended up with a you know 79 and 83 record. And anyway, Kapler is gone. And I think a large segment of the fan base is probably happy with this decision. And 
that's kind of the point, I think. Because as we'll get to later, like, is it Kapler's fault that this team, I, I don't even want to say underperformed at this point, that this team didn't succeed the last two seasons? There's definitely an argument to be made that it's, made that it's not his fault. But at the same time, what I think this is about is two things. Number one, I just think lo- like large segments of the fan base never liked or trusted or believed in or thought that Kapler was the right person for this job. And I think that, you know, in this press release, they make it sound like Farhan Zaidi is the one who made the recommendation, but it could just be that they're doing that uh, intentionally and that it was more, you know, maybe coming from the top down and you don't want to have it look like ownership went over the head of Farhan Zaidi to fire Kapler and then it puts Zaidi in a really awkward position. And that's what happened in Philadelphia when Kapler was fired. Ownership went over the heads of the president of baseball operations and GM. They wanted to keep Kapler, but it was the owner who said, mm, nah, he's fired. So, uh, this way, I think it's a better way of doing it if you're going to keep Farhan Zaidi, which is clearly the in- clearly the intent. And I will explain later why I think of the two, it it did in fact make the most sense to to dismiss Kapler and keep Farhan Zaidi. That may be a tough argument to make for some, but I'm going to try to make that argument a little bit later. But basically, I think from the moment he was hired. From the moment he was hired, from that introductory press conference that was super awkward and uncomfortable, um, it's not really fair to Kapler in a lot of ways because, I mean, I don't want to get too into that whole situation that happened in the past in L.A., but, you know, he was cleared of any wrongdoing after a thorough investigation by MLB, and MLB, you know, they're, they're not lenient with this kind of stuff, and he was cleared after like tons of evidence was sorted through. So he got this reputation right away and it just left a bad feeling, including with me. Like I was so surprised when they hired Kapler in the first place. I kept, you know, Andrew Baggerly like wrote a piece early on in the process when they were looking for a new manager back then. And Baggerly was like Kapler. Kapler when he was like reading between the lines of some stuff that Zaidi said and I was like no man Baggerly is way off there's no way that they're gonna hire this guy I just didn't think the persona kind of fit the San Francisco Giants but they hired him and it was uncomfortable from the start I think he won over a lot of people and people realized he's not a bad guy He's a well-intentioned, like very hardworking, dedicated, loyal, all the stuff that Farhan Zaidi said. But at the same time, I I think he lacks he lacks an ability to like unite a group of twenty six plus players and inspire them to be the best version of themselves some players might disagree but just in general i'm not sure he has that those leadership qualities because he's a little bit of like a strange individual and uh i think he's smart and bright and a good person generally and that he has a role somewhere in baseball for sure because he's very i think like development oriented and i think there's a high ranking role for him somewhere, but I'm just not sure that he's right for an MLB managerial position. And so I think that is why the Giants ultimately made this decision uh, because, you know, Grant Brisby was all over this with a piece about should the Giants fire Gabe Kapler? And his main reason why maybe they should had to do with the fact that the fans just largely never warmed up to him and that's a big deal you know you want you just want the positive vibes and like belief from the fans in the manager and I just think that there a lot of people maybe had that but a lot of people didn't and there are other choices you can make and we'll get into potential replacements where you wouldn't have that issue and then I think within the clubhouse 
with some of the stuff that came out from Logan Webb saying big changes in here. He meant to me in the clubhouse. I don't think he meant firing Kapler. I think he meant like just culturally, but that reflects on the manager. The manager is ultimately in charge of the clubhouse, but he was very hands off. And so he didn't like come. He didn't like, he wasn't the captain of the ship. And so they were lacking that. And I think they just, they decided uh, it, it was time to move on. And so we will continue this discussion, but also get into why does Farhan Zaidi get to keep his job? He's the one who built these rosters that have failed all but in all but one season of his five-year tenure here. So that's a big question, and we'll get into it in just a minute. And before we do, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite event. Unfortunately, it's not going to be Giants postseason baseball. One time I went to uh, L.A. I drove down to L.A. to watch the Dodgers play the Brewers uh, just because I missed postseason baseball several years ago. And buying tickets to an event like that shouldn't have to be stressful. I'm, it was for me uh, using non-game time platforms uh, because it was oddly only... I think I had been to Dodger Stadium one other time, but the tickets were bought for me. But buying tickets to a new venue... I want to know what is what does the view look like from the seat from a two dimensional map. I have no idea, and with game time you get images of seat views, which completely solved that major problem in my opinion. If you don't have that, then what do you what are we even doing here? And then also playoff tickets. I mean, I'm worried about getting the best price for sure. These tickets were not cheap, and so I'm wondering, okay, if I buy now, what if the prices go down later or you know, if I buy late, what if the prices were better earlier? Whatever. But with game time, you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And by the way, it's not just sports. We're talking concerts and everything you can think of that involves tickets, theater and whatever. So download today. All righty, here we go. We are going to get into why the heck does Farhan Zaidi get to keep his job? Uh, A lot of people I've seen written, you know, pieces about thinking they were a package deal, you know. I I don't see it that way. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow on the show, more reaction and fallout. I hope, you know, in the next couple days we're going to get a post-mortem on the season where it's going to be very interesting to hear what Farhan Zaidi and Pete Patella and whoever else decides to take the podium, the stage uh, for that. And they're going to break down the process of looking for a new manager for the San Francisco Giants. It's a big deal. I kind of think they messed it up last time, to be honest. Like, you know, I tried to justify it, but I just, I just never really felt like personality wise that Gabe Kapler I think like he could work in a role where he's doing what he was doing but but being the manager being the face that people see and doing two media sessions a day I'm just I just feel like his he has an odd way of communicating like no offense to the guy that that's just like to be in front of cameras 24-7 is hard. And I just am not sure he has the personality to be in front of a camera 24-7 and represent your team to everyone who's watching. So anyway, we'll we'll, we'll be back with much more tomorrow. So why does Farhan Zaidi get to keep his job? A lot of people asking this question. I think that, by the way, Tim Kawakami in The Athletic, before Kapler was fired. his Kawakami's main point was that 
uh, when the Padres were in town, I suppose, or maybe the Giants, I forget. The last couple weeks of the season, I've just kind of, it's been a blur because the Giants were just tanking and losing all the time and playoff hopes were getting drained by the second. But anyway, Kawakami met with Kapler in the dugout for a media session, and then he met with Bob Melvin of the Padres in the dugout for a media session. And Kawakami's main point was that he couldn't shake the feeling that the wrong person of the two was managing the Giants. And this was before Kapler was uh, fired. So that's a powerful kind of statement to make. And within that article, I, I don't always agree with Tim Kawakami. I really don't. But I thought that he kind of nailed so much of what he said in that piece, including like his point that he thought Zaidi was more like Zaidi's ability as a president of baseball operations was more valuable than Kapler's kind of whatever he does, which is, you know, the manager doesn't do all that much. And sounds like in the clubhouse, Kapler wasn't doing all that much, uh, very hands off and just letting the players police themselves and all that and kind of not even present. Like we heard during these team meetings that the Giants had that we heard about with Tyro Estrada speaking up and Wilmer Flores, Mike Yastrzemski, uh, even Ron Wotus coming in and speaking up. Kapler never spoke. And I think that speaks volumes. He never spoke. He wasn't that guy. I just don't, I'm just, he's just not that guy. And I think you need that guy, someone who is a leader and can unite and inspire players and fans. Somebody asked me, like, how does a manager inspire fans? What I mean is, like, inspire confidence. Like, the fans believe in you as the leader of this team. And I don't think he had that for a large segment of people from the beginning. And even those who, like, warmed up to him, there was still, like, okay, maybe. It wasn't, like, yes, total confidence and belief. To be fair, Bruce Bochy... Before the success, you know, I recall it was pre-social media and Twitter, um, but, you know, no one was thrilled with Bochy until he had success. But personality-wise, I just think, like I said, I've said in recent days, Kapler has a tendency to say really, like, truthful things, perhaps, but just things that shouldn't really be said by a manager. Like, in his first off season, before he had ever managed a game at the winter meetings, asked about Brandon Crawford, it was kind of a softball question. Like, talk about how great Brandon Crawford is. And he was like, um, Crawford has at times been a plus defender at short in his career. And it was just like, what? Basically, it's a backhanded compliment, kind of. And it bothered Crawford, and they had to talk about it. And that was like one of the first public comments he made as Giants manager. And then, um, I forget, there was a recent example, there was a Tristan Beck recent example where he's like, he's not the he's not our best pitcher, but he's not our worst. Uh, just really odd kind of, he can't help but be really awkwardly honest sometimes. And that was a problem to me, and it probably rubbed a lot of players the wrong way. So anyway, why does Farhan Zaidi get to keep his job? It's a fair question, and, and he enters 2024 on the last year of his contract, and they haven't extended him. And so um, Kapler, by the way, was under contract for 2024 also, so this is a legitimate firing. It wasn't like his contract just ran out and they didn't renew it. They cut him loose with a year left on the deal. But I have, I mean, I've made these points. I made them on Twitter after Kapler was fired. But basically, if you look at Farhan Zaidi's track record, there are a lot of positives. This last offseason turned out to be almost all negative with the moves that were made. But prior to that, I mean, they got Tyro Estrada in a trade for cash from the Yankees. And Estrada has become just 
clearly a good major league player. Like he's not a superstar, but he is good in like all facets of the game. Mike Yastrzemski, solid player, not a star, but again, like you need solid players around your roster. You also need some true impact talent, and I think that's the one thing they're really missing on, especially on the position player side. Uh, but they got Yaz in a trade for Tyler Erb from the Orioles, and you know the Orioles never gave him a chance, and the Giants saw something in him, and and clearly he's a solid major league player. Lamont Wade Jr., they got him for Sean Anderson in a trade. J.D. Davis and three prospects they got for Darren Ruff. And and then they ended up getting Darren Ruff back after the Mets DFA'd him. So uh, there have been a lot of savvy trades that have led to some solid players. And Estrada, I think, is a little more than just solid. I think that when you factor in defense and base running, I mean, he led the team in, in Fangraph's wins above replacement for position players with almost four and he missed a month. And so we're talking probably like four and a half, which is like all-star level. A lot of it is defense and base running, but Estrada is a good player. And like t- Giants see, Zaidi has a talent for seeing things in players that other teams aren't seeing. And famously, he brought Max Muncy to the Dodgers. And I've said this, I wish he would have, waited a year or two and uh, waited until he was here to bring Max Muncy here and not to LA. But Muncy was a cast off from the uh, Oakland A's and Zaidi saw something in him and boom, Muncy is a star. And on the free agent side, like not all the moves have worked out, but like some of them have been brilliant, such as Kevin Gosman, Carlos Rodon, uh, Wilmer Flores has been a huge hit. So yes, there are, there are bad ones like and this offseason a lot of those moves didn't work out and I think like the 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 missing piece has been bold action and like signing Kevin Gosman to the deal the Blue Jays signed him to seemed like they were timid and didn't want to do that but like you're just a move or two away if you actually make that move instead of bringing back Alex Wood and Anthony DiScofani you're in a totally different spot. And if you end up, he tried to sign. I know tr- nobody likes tried, but he did try to get those superstars. And maybe that's the, the missing piece is like, you just got to go past your comfort zone financially. And that could be ownership and not Zaidi, but they, they went after Bryce Harper in his first off season here. They went after Aaron judge legitimately like huge, Con- the 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 offer the Giants made was the offer that the Yankees matched and that he took, and they got Carlos Correa to agree to their terms for three hundred fifty million dollars. And so all of that combined, I think that Zaidi like really is uh, a good leader, but he's got to be more bold, and I think he recognizes that, and that the failures of these last couple years. He understands you've got to do better because this 81 or 79 win thing is just not going to fly. And that if he doesn't make it better next year, he won't be back. But there's a lot of positives with him, in my opinion. So anyway, who are the managerial candidates? Who is going to be the next manager of the San Francisco Giants? We'll throw out some options and talk about briefly maybe more on this tomorrow because it deserves more attention Brandon Crawford says goodbye maybe we'll get into it next all right as promised who are the candidates to replace Gabe Kapler the Giants have a managerial opening it's kind of a huge deal Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day, every day or tomorrow. More about this. I don't know when the post-mortem is going to be, when, you know, Zaidi gets in front of the media, etc. That will be fascinating. So be sure to come back all week for uh, when that happens and all the fallout and reaction to that. And then we're going to get rumors, you know. We're going to hear this person interviewed with the Giants. All that's going to be coming up over the next month. And they said they want to get someone in place 
by free agency, which is right after the playoffs. And so the, within a month, the Giants are going to have a new manager. Who's it going to be? And uh, some candidates. I mean, they're, they're, you never know. Like One of the big questions for me is, are they willing to go with a first-year manager? Like, is this a situation in which they can afford to go with someone who's never done it before and might not be great? Because that's risky. And maybe maybe this is a situation where you want to go with someone who has some experience. And in which case, like the Bob Melvins of the world, like that was the guy that... Uh, Tim Kawakami was mentioning and everybody has mentioned Bob Melvin as a possibility. And and at first I I sent out a tweet which was the whatever you know the famous gif of I don't I don't know his name but at the Oscars going like nah nah you can't see me if you're just listening but the signaling just like no 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 no. And the more I think about it like it wouldn't be my favorite pick personally, but Bob Melvin instantly commands respect. He's well established in this game. And, you know, he, from his time in Oakland, like somebody on Twitter was like, I was a diehard Oakland A's fan and I watched a lot of Melvin. And if Giants fans don't like platoons, they'll have something in store for them with Melvin. Because that's the thing is that you platoon players need to be platooned fact the Giants just have too many platoon players the problem isn't like oh Jock Peterson should be starting against lefties the bigger question is like maybe don't have Jock Peterson and instead sign an everyday player instead you know they sign platoon players or they target platoon players and there's a little too much of that and we need some everyday stability so but Bob Melvin I mean he would get it he's like you know, if he had Jock Peterson, he's pinch hitting for him too. And if he had Lamont Wade, he's pinch hitting for him too. And so those are some, like, you just have to understand that's, it wasn't like just a Gabe Kapler thing. It was, they built their roster this way, but they need to build their roster differently. And I think Farhan Zaidi gets that now. Um, He has to, because they've come up way short the last two seasons. Um, But some other names, I mean, Bob Melvin, he's got a year left on his contract with the Padres. Part of the reason I just am not in love with him as a candidate is like he had this superstar team in San Diego. And this year, like they barely finished above 500. They most predicted that they would be one of the top, if not the top team in baseball. And they just floundered like the whole season and that perhaps somewhat at least reflects on the manager I don't know maybe not maybe it was just a cultural player thing but um just wasn't a good year for him so there would be some questions about what the heck went on in San Diego but somebody I really like and I just I don't think the odds are very high that the Giants could end up with him but Craig Council of the Milwaukee Brewers. Like to me, he's like the perfect guy because he he kind of understands the modern game. He understands the, the analytics and all that. And you need someone who can do that. You We're not talking like go back in time and sign or hire Buck Showalter or with all due respect, personally, like a Ron Wotus. I just don't you need somebody who's a little more in tune with the modern game. Uh, and I think that Craig Council is that. And But yet he also, like personality-wise, I think has what Kapler didn't have, which is um, just a commanding of respect automatically and an ability to communicate effectively to the media and likely to the players, and just be the captain of the ship. And he's very stoic, very thoughtful, uh, and the Brewers have had just had consistent success under him. 
and his contract is up after the season. The the big reason why I think he's not likely is be, is because his former president of baseball operations in Milwaukee has left and is now leading New York Mets, the New York Mets, and Buck Showalter has said he's not coming back. So they have a vacancy and there's strong ties with Council and David Stearns and I think that if Council leaves the Brewers the heavy favorites would be the New York Mets for him to go to so I think that that's ultimately probably what happens if he leaves the Brewers but if he for for whatever reason wanted to come here I think Craig Council would be a great fit some other options it's kind of a short list I made of course there's a lot of people have thrown out like Dusty Baker Ron Washington and I was super wrong about their Kapler decision. And so I'm not going to claim that I know exactly what they're looking for here. But I threw this out weeks ago because I was losing faith in Kapler's ability to lead this team weeks ago. And honestly, frankly, I've always kind of had a just like those the comments that he makes just always rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. But how about this? The one way to get Donnie Ecker back in your organization, the the only promotion really that he could get. And when you offer a player or a, a coach a promotion, the convention in baseball is that teams grant permission for that person to go interview for a promotion, even if they're under contract with you. And so if you'd say, hey, Donnie Ecker, we want you to possibly be the manager of the San Francisco Giants, uh, if he was interested, he grew up in the Bay Area, uh, they should be able to interview him. The one thing, like I said, though, he's that would be a first-time manager, and you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, but he would be able to hire a staff that potentially would be a great hitting group. He could be manager and in charge of the uh, offense. I don't know. It's just it's a it's a name to consider. And then one other name I just want to throw out there. There are plenty of names to throw out there. But Buster Posey. I said this on a live stream that I did a couple nights ago. Buster Posey basically has this job if he wants it. The thing is, I don't think he wants it. But he, like Craig Council, very stoic, uh, commands respect just automatically but even more so here, of course, because he's Buster Posey and this is the San Francisco Giants. And I don't know, maybe there's a lack of, like, would he platoon Jock Peterson? Like, would he pinch hit for Jock Peterson in the fourth inning, you know, against a lefty in a big situation? I have no idea. But, like, I wouldn't complain for a second if they said, I mean, the fans would just go nuts about how great of a, I mean, it just couldn't be better if it was Buster Posey. So anyway, that is all the time we have for today. We didn't get a chance to talk about Crawford, so that'll be coming up tomorrow in addition to any other rumors and news that come out. Thanks again for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. Every day or tomorrow, like I said, more about this major news and about Crawford and his future and his potential goodbye, but maybe not. We're not sure tomorrow. Uh, once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot. So thanks in advance and thank you to everyone who's done so already. Can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.